to save your ass. <laughs> What's up nerfers, today I'm taking a look at the Game Face Trion, a mid-sized manual springer that can swap between three different power levels in a matter of seconds. Without spoiling too much, as the title suggests, I managed to get insane levels of accuracy out of this thing for its mid-range 200 FPS power level. But more on that later. This was sent to me from Game Face themselves, forwarded via Blaster Tech, who will be stocking these in Australia for 185 Australian dollars. You can also find the Trion in the USA for 80 US dollars. Check it out at the relevant links down below, where you can choose either the teal one like mine, or an alternative red coloured version. Now, I've got to be honest with you. When I first saw the Game Face Trion, I thought it would just be like their old blaster, which was itself pretty much just a Jet Blaster Cedar reskin. I'm very happy to say though that after using this blaster, this has nothing in common with that at all, and it's a completely ground up design from Game Face. There's some things that are improved over a Cedar, there's also some things that are worse, but let's begin with one of the things that I think makes it better. The Trion uses a traditional clamshell design with no flimsy takedown pins. That means the Trion has some nice rock solid rigidity, unlike the Cedar which was very flimsy. With the Trion there's no movement or creaking at all, though as you would expect there is some slight movement from the stock. And that's pretty much always the case with anything adjustable though. The clamshell design does mean that if you want to get to the internals, you have a lot of screws to undo. But with the way this is designed, most of you probably aren't ever going to need to open it up. And that's because at the back of the blaster, if you remove the back of the adjustable pistol grip stock, you can access the spring directly by rotating the end cap. And included in the box are two plastic spring spaces, you can either put one of them on or two, depending on how much you want to increase the power. And I'll chrono test all three configurations for you later on in the video. Now though, let's balance out the good news with some bad. Taking a look at the muzzle end of the barrel, for some reason Game Face have foregone the threaded barrel that the Cedar had, and instead copied probably the worst thing about Dart Zone blasters by having a barrel that sits loosely into the Dart gate and is held in solely by the muzzle piece. When you do this, the barrel ends inside the muzzle. That means you can't add a scar barrel to it the usual way. So what I ended up having to do is put on Game Face's included decorative muzzle piece, which does nothing, wrap some electrical tape around a worker scar barrel, and then simply friction fit shove it into the end of the muzzle, hoping that it stays there as darts fire through it. Now I am aware that there's 3D printed scar barrels people have designed specifically for the Trion, which thread on in place of the decorative muzzle piece, but at the time of this video, there isn't an injection molded option from Game Face themselves. With their past experience with the Prime, which was based on the Cedar, I would have thought they'd at least include a scar barrel. Later on in the video though, I'll do an accuracy test with and without my makeshift worker Scar. Spoiler alert, the worker scar worked absolutely brilliantly despite its kind of janky appearance. Moving on to the handguard now though, the left and right sides have M-lock slots where you can add attachments like a flashlight. Some very good news is that despite the more slender handguard of the Trion, there's still plenty of clearance between the internal priming mech and the M-lock slots. So thankfully, unlike some other blasters I've tried in the past, when you do have an M-lock attachment on, it doesn't collide with the priming bars. Up top, the Trion has a full length Picatinny rail and included in the box are some very basic non-adjustable iron sights which slide freely along the rail. They don't even lock in place. Personally, I just kept them on for looks and I added a one times red dot sight to actually aim with. But if you want to use non-adjustable irons, who am I to judge? Now, a lot of blasters lately have been tackling the breach coming open issue when you point the blaster up in the air by simply adding a return spring. The Trion, however, solves that issue in a very different way. With this blaster, when you close the breach, it engages a plastic lock that then prevents it from opening again until you've pulled the trigger. You can disengage the lock at any time using the switch above the breach window, and I'll say that comes in handy later on, but I don't want to spoil too much of that. What I will say though is this isn't necessarily a worse way of solving the problem than return springs, but it does make the blaster feel a lot more clunky to use. Another feature that some of you are going to absolutely love is that this has slam fire. So if you hold the trigger down when priming the blaster, when the pump grip reaches the forward position, the blaster will fire immediately. This allows you to rapid fire the blaster at the cost of accuracy.
With a very short prime length and a plastic bearing that runs along the barrel, you can get some insane rate of fire out of this thing despite being a manual springer. Personally though, I pretty much never use slam fire, but the option is there if you want to use it. The included angled foregrip can be removed by undoing its four screws, and underneath you'll find a short segment of Picatinny rail where you could add your own grip. Myself, I do tend to prefer vertical grips these days, but this wasn't too bad to use. But it's nice that you can swap it out if you want to. Another nice change over the Cedar or Gameface Prime is that they've scrapped the Katana magazine, instead giving this blaster a worker Talon compatible magwell. The Trion also comes with a unique magazine of its own, with a transparent left side and opaque right side. This is a cool idea for right handed users so they can keep tabs on their remaining ammo while opponents to the right of them won't be able to see it. This magazine also works in other talent compatible blasters you might have. Something I did find though is that when you hit the paddle mag release on the bottom of the blaster, I found that the Trion's mags do gravity drop free with the breech closed, but actual worker talons still require you to give them a light pull to remove. So if you want to do those tactical mag drops with this thing, you might want to get some of the Trion's mags instead of actual talons. Located above the trigger is a safety switch identical to what you would have seen before on the old Cedar or Prime blasters. Quite obviously it's labelled S for safe and F for fire, just push it in on the labelled side to swap between the two. The trigger pull requires a little bit of force but there's no slack to it at all. Once the trigger moves the blaster fires. I guess you could call it a hair trigger but with some resistance to it, unlike the very light hair trigger of the Harrier. Coming to the rear of the blaster, out of the box it comes with an adjustable pistol grip stock. Simply use the button on the right hand side to extend, to retract or fully remove it. Now from my understanding, this entire teal coloured piece, so the pistol grip through to the part on the buffer tube, that can all be removed and if you install a real steel spec grip, plus an M4 buffer tube stock, you can make this thing look more like an AR-15. Honestly though, I quite like the pistol grip that it comes with. It makes the Trion stand out as a unique looking blaster compared to all the other retalioids available these days. As I showed earlier, with the stock removed you can access the spring by just rotating this end cap. For those of you who might want to try and find replacement upgrade springs or downgrade springs, this has the exact same diameter as a cedar spring but it's just a few inches longer. I think that just about covers my overview of the Trion though, so now let's get to some testing. In the box you get some unique game face darts. They look similar to Adventure Force Pros but they only weigh 0.75 grams. Game face, are you taking another page out of Dart Zone's book and trying to make it seem like your blaster is more powerful than it actually is? Well, we're about to find out because I've loaded up a mag with seven one gram worker bamboo darts, along with seven game face darts that weigh three quarters the weight. Starting with no spring spaces installed to see the lowest power, seven game face darts and then seven worker darts. 156. 169. 167. 158, 149, 101, that was a pretty bad shot, 122, now onto workers, 154, 151, 152, duplicate 152, 152 again, 155, 175, okay that's a bit higher than the rest. So with no spring spaces installed for the lowest power, game face dart shot a high of 169, low of 101, average of 146 and a standard deviation of 25. Worker Bamboo on the other hand shot a high of 175, low of 151, average of 155 and standard deviation of 8.5. Despite being lighter, the game face darts had a lower average velocity and far worse consistency. This tells me the barrel is probably too long for them at this power level while worker bamboos with a lower friction aren't as hindered by the lack of spaces. So now I'll add one of the spaces and repeat the test again to see the medium power setting of the Trion. 169 166 
178, 175, 193, 196, 200. All right, onto the workers now. 182, 174, 180, 220, 222, 216. All right, that last shot, 178. With one spacer installed, game face dart shot a high of 200, low of 166, average of 182, and a standard deviation of 13.7. Worker Bamboos, on the other hand, shot a high of 222, low of 174, average of 196, and a standard deviation of 22. Again, the lighter game face darts average a lower velocity than the heavier Worker Bamboos. Both dart types were also very inconsistent at this power level. So for my final velocity test, I'll add the second spacer to see what the Trion is truly capable of. 218. 223, 217, 206, 217, 216, and 227. I think we're on to workers now. 199, 205, 203. 201, 203, 200, I think we're about to dry fire, nope, 203, this will be the dry fire, yep. With both spaces, game face start shot a high of 227, low of 206, average of 217 and a standard deviation of 6.5. Worker bamboo darts though, shot a high of 205, low of 199, average of 202 and an incredible standard deviation of 2. This is an absolute night and day difference compared to the weaker power levels. Both dart types improve from their consistency, with worker bamboos achieving an incredible standard deviation of two. Game Face's lighter darts also did what they're supposed to do this time and shot a higher velocity than heavier worker bamboos. And what this tells me is that the Trion's barrel length is definitely optimized for using both spaces. And removing the spaces to reduce the power is more of a gimmick. With that impressive chrono test completed, to end off my testing, it's time to check accuracy. I'm only gonna test with both spaces installed and first I'll fire seven Game Face darts and then seven worker darts with no rifling, and that's just since the blaster doesn't come with any. Then I'll add my makeshift worker scar and see if it improves anything. Shooting from a distance of 30 meters away at a 1 meter diameter target, here's no rifling. Hit. Good guess, I guess. Just low, I think I hit the cinder block. Hit. 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 That was fish tailing all through the air. But it still hit. 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 Alright, now we have worker bamboos. Miss to the left. Just short on the cinder block. Hit. Hit. Just a hit, it was like right on the red border. Hit. And just short. 
honestly not bad without rifling but let's see how we improve that with the worker scar barrel and I'm just gonna aim a little bit higher than I was before since the friction will slow it down hit hit just short hit hit Hit. Hit. Onto the workers now. Hit. 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 Wow, that's pretty bullseye accurate. Hit. Quite impressed with the work of bamboos out of this. Just for reference, without the rifling, I was aiming at this notch on the tree and they were falling on the target. And to reach it with the scar barrel, I was aiming a little bit higher at this notch here to hit the center. With no rifling, Game Face Dart shot a 75 centimeter spread, which was actually better than how the worker bamboo darts performed. They only shot a 110 centimeter spread. With the worker scar just rammed in the end of the muzzle, both dart types improved compared to before but the winner here is clearly the bamboo darts. They shot a 20 centimeter spread, which for you American viewers, here's a banana for scale. Very impressive for a 200 FPS nerf blaster at a distance of 30 meters or 100 feet. In fact, it's probably the best I've seen at this power level since the Swin Balance. And all this was with a worker scar wrapped in electrical tape and just shoved in the end of the muzzle. Unfortunately, after using the Trion in some gameplay, I need to go straight from that accuracy test high into the low of an issue I found with the blaster. Multiple times out on the field, I'd go to pull the trigger and nothing would happen. The safety was off, the blaster was primed, a dart was loaded, but the trigger just wouldn't budge. With the way that breech locks closed, the only thing I could do was to drop the mag out, hit the unlock button and reprime the blaster, reinsert the mag and then it would work again. But in the clip you're about to see, I was hidden in a bush with one of the best players we have here clearly lined up in my sight. But due to this trigger malfunction, the trio took that kill away from me and got me killed as a result. According to Game Phase, this issue goes away after a break-in period, but I had already shot over 100 darts through it by the time this happened. This player even knew he should have lost that one talking to him after the match. I can't tell you definitely whether this issue goes away or not, but assuming it does, what do I think of the Trion overall despite that? This is, in many ways, a big step up from the Jet Blaster Cedar and Game Phase Prime. It has a Talon Magwell out of the box, a bang, unique bang. pistol grip buttstock that looks cool and allows you to add or remove spaces to change the power level. It has M lock on the front that doesn't impede the pump grip's travel, despite the slick looking thinner handguard. And it doesn't have any rattly takedown pins. I know some of you would love that it doesn't have them. That being said, I can't help but see some of the design choices being direct copies 
of what I hate most about Dart Zones blasters. The main one is that the barrel seats loosely into the dart gate with a front muzzle piece just holding it in. And that prevents you from attaching any form of rifling directly to the barrel itself. It forsakes the threaded barrel system the Cedar and Prime used, which could have been helpful to allow me to swap in shorter barrels when using the lower power settings. The chrono numbers with no spacer or one spacer were very inconsistent, most likely due to the barrel being too long. With both spacers installed though, the Trion was insanely consistent with worker bamboo darts. A standard deviation of 2, with an average of 202 feet per second, and an accuracy spread of only 20 centimeters. And all I did was friction fit a worker scar into the muzzle with electrical tape. I haven't even seen that level of accuracy in a mid-power 200 FPS blaster since the Swin Balance, which is a thousand dollar platform. This only costs 185 Australian dollars or 80 US dollars, and it will be absolutely perfect for that mid-range 200 FPS velocity level that a lot of people play at. If you want something that shoots lower than that or higher than that, this probably isn't the best choice. Something like the Worker Harrier with its quick swappable springs and threaded barrels, I think is a far better choice if you want to play multiple velocity levels. The Trion definitely seems optimized for having both spring spaces installed, and it is very optimized for that power level. But what do you guys think? Would you buy a Trion or do you already own one of these? How's your trigger going? Are you having any issues like I did? Please feel free to comment about the blaster down below. Find it at the links down below. Give this video a like or a dislike to let me know what you thought of it. Here's two other videos you might enjoy. And as always, thank you very much for watching. See ya.